And in this video, we'll be looking at the information on pages Excel 14 and 15, in which we're going to be looking at the different worksheet views that Excel has to offer. Now, you can change your view of the worksheet window at any time using either the View tab up here on the ribbon, or you can use the View buttons down here on the status bar. Now, changing your view does not affect the contents of the worksheet in any way. It just makes it easier for you to focus on different tasks such as entering content or preparing a worksheet for printing. Now the View tab includes a variety of viewing options such as view buttons, zoom controls, and the ability to show or hide worksheet elements such as grid lines. Now the status bar offers fewer view options but it can be more convenient to use for you. Now in step one it tells us that we do want to click on the View tab on the ribbon and then we're going to click the page layout button in the workbooks view group uh, on there. So if we click on the page layout button here, notice it changes the view. And of course although a worksheet can contain more than a million rows and a thousand columns or thousands of columns, the current document contains only as many pages as necessary for the current project. So it will not print out truckloads of pages. It will only print out what it needs. Of course, now when we click on the page layout button in the workbook views group, the view switches from the default view, which is normal, to the page layout view. Now, the normal view, which we were on, shows the worksheet without including certain details like headers and footers or tools such like rulers and page number indicators. Now, it's a great for creating and editing a worksheet but it may not be detailed enough when you want to put the finishing touches on the document. And then that is why you would use the page layout view because it provides a more accurate view of how a worksheet will look when it's printed. Now the margins of a page are displayed, which we can see here as the uh, uh, on there, uh, as our rulers. And of course uh, we can use our show to show rulers, grid lines, headings, and formula bars uh, on there as well. Now, along with the text box for a header, and of course we see our header right here. Of course, here's our margins up at the top, and here's our headers. And of course, in addition to the header um, on there, we do have a footer text box at the bottom of the page. So we have three different footer text boxes down there as well. But your screen may not be large enough to view it without scrolling, because you notice that I had to scroll down to see this. Now, above and to the left of the page are the rulers. So we see that here's a ruler uh, right up top here, and here's a ruler right over here. Now, part of an additional page appears uh, to the right of the page that we're currently on. But you'll notice that it's dimmed out a little bit, which indicates that it doesn't contain any data. And of course, a page. Uh, we also notice that a page number indicator um, on there uh, on the status bar. Of course, if you don't have it, like you may see that right now we don't have it on there, we can actually right click uh, a blank part of the status bar and we can look on here and uh, we can notice that there's some different areas that we can see. Of course, we have average counts and everything else that's on there and you can uh, change that to where um, you know so there is a um, the information that tells us how many pages we're currently on. Uh, on there as well. Uh, so you can feel free to use these uh, information. Uh, of course, you know, we can remove it or we can add the page numbers uh, on there as well uh, when we're there. So if we're inside of the document, we now notice that now it says, uh, or excuse me, inside the worksheet, we now are on page 101 and everything else is all grayed out. If we move our mouse pointer over the heading without clicking, of course we notice that uh, we see that the header is made up of these three boxes, uh, which is a left, center, and right. And each text box is outlined in green as you pass over it uh, with the pointer. Of course it may just be a thicker black uh, on some computers, but uh, uh, they do say that it is green on some other computers. Now of course if we click at the left header text box. So right up here, and of course you'll notice it says header up here, we can type in Quest Specialty Travel. Then if we click, and of course this is step three, 
If we click the center text box, we can enter in information there, and we're going to type in Trip Advisor Payroll Calculator. And then if we click the right text box, we're going to type in Week 30. So that we can see that actually instead of putting the information directly into the worksheet, we can actually use some of it and put it in the headers. Now generally you only want to put labels in the headers, not any values, because um, you know, these are not going to be used in calculations. Now of course the text appears in the text boxes. Now instead of clicking the text boxes, you could also press the tab key to advance from one header box to the next. If we would go down and select the range A1 to G2. And of course, once again, that's where we were saying that uh, to understand the name of range, it's the most upper left cell, which is A1, and the lower right cell, which is in G2, and that's the range that you have. Once you have that, it tells you to hit the delete key on your keyboard. Now, the duplicate information you just entered in the header is now going to be deleted from the uh, cells in the worksheet. Now, it has cleared the cells. It has not removed the cells. That's a key thing to understand. When you hit your delete key or your backspace key, generally it clears the cells. It does not delete it because if you notice, the rest of our information has not moved. Of course, next, um, if you have to, make sure you go ahead and click on your View tab. And then let's click on our ruler checkbox. And if we click on that, uh, on there, of course, we'll notice that the ruler has been disappeared uh, from this page here. Then, of course, in step five, it tells us that we want to click on the grid lines checkbox. And, of course, uh, we notice that the grid lines uh, on the cells uh, have now been hidden. And, of course, by default, grid lines in a worksheet do not print. So if you hide them, it actually gives you a more accurate image of what your final document is going to look like. And of course, remember as well, you can also change headers and footer information using the header and footer tools design tab uh, that opens up on the ribbon when a header or footer is active. So if I would activate this um, up here in our header and footer tools, we also have that design tab as well. And of course, for example, you can insert a date by clicking the current day button. Uh, in the elements group or you can insert the time by clicking the current time uh, on there so that's just another um, helpful tip for you as well of course next if we go here um, we want to click on the page and this is step six it tells us to click the page break view or page break preview button on the status bar and that is this button right here next to our zoom slider and if we click on this this shows us the page break uh, preview now, really, and this displays a reduced view of each page of your worksheet, along with page break indicators that you can drag to include more or less information on a page. So on step seven, it tells us that we want to drag uh, the pointer from the bottom page break indicator, which this blue line is our page break indicator. If we click on this, we can actually drag this down, and it wants us to drag it below uh, or to the bottom of row 20. And of course notice when we drag it and then release our mouse button, um, we've added more data to our uh, spreadsheet. Now it's not numbers or labels or anything, we just add more room in there. And of course when you're working on a large document with multiple pages, sometimes you need to adjust where the page breaks are. So earlier it would end the page break right there on uh, the bottom of cell or on row 18. Now it's actually going to bring the page break down to the bottom of row 20. And that way so all the information is going to comfortably fit in on one page. Now on step 8 it tells us that we want to click on our page layout button. So if we go back to our page layout uh, button here, and of course we can do that in the workbooks uh, views group, we can click on the ruler again and that will show the ruler and of course we can click on the grid lines and that will show the grid lines as well and of course now you'll notice that the ruler and the grid lines are no longer hidden and you can show or hide the view tab uh, items in any view so that is just something that you can take a look at uh, on there as well of course once you view a worksheet in a page break preview 
The page break indicators appear as dotted lines after you switch back to normal view or the page layout view. So you notice that it kind of looks like there's a little box around here, but really that's not a box. Those are just the indicator uh, of where the page break is at. So go ahead and save your work on there. And that is um, completes the information that's on pages Excel 14 and 15 about switching the worksheet views. Uh, you can now move on to the final video in which we're going to be talking about print options.